Hi, in this video we're looking at another example of where we've got the equation for a circle and the equation for a straight line and what we're going to do is plot where the coordinates cross or where the, or where the circumference of the circle crosses with the straight line because effectively we've got something like this so if this is the circle itself it's going to sit around about a radius of roughly 8. Now the reason I know that is because this is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well that's close enough really to 64 so therefore it means that the radius is going to be the square root of 64 which is going to be 8. So it would be 8 on the x-axis minus 8 over here and then 8 on the y-axis and minus 8 there. Okay, so what they're asking us to do is to calculate where a straight line that passes through that circle will intersect. Well, if we have a look at that straight line, we've got y plus 5 equals 3x. I'm going to change that to make y the subject. So basically, you've got it now in the format of y equals mx plus c, which is the way that we normally look at straight lines. In other words, this is the y-intercept, it crosses through the y-axis at minus 5 and it's got a gradient of 3. So basically it will go through something like that. It's not a particularly good picture but that would be minus 5 at that point. So that would be the y-axis. Okay, so let's have a look now at how we're going to solve this. Well, we've actually now got a value of y that we can directly take this information and plug it straight into our formula. So rather than writing x squared plus y squared equals 65, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x squared plus, and rather than y, I'm going to put 3x minus 5 squared equals 65. Okay, and then really it's a case of expanding and solving for x. Now, it seems a little bit daunting at the moment, but it does actually work out really uh, reasonably well with this uh, calculation. So let's have a look then at expanding these two brackets here, because I've got 3x minus 5 multiplied by 3x minus 5, and that equals 65. Okay, so I suggest with a lot of these things that you work kind of down the page fairly methodically as you're going, and then uh, at least you'll be able to be awarded marks for showing your working even if at the end of it you're not quite sure. But this one I think you should be okay with. So I've got x squared, and then I'm going to multiply this out. So 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times minus 5 is minus 15x, minus 15x is minus 30x, and then I've got plus 25 equals 65. Now obviously if you're not sure about how I've done that, please do have a look on the channel at some of the other playlists and that'll give you quite a few more examples. In, the, in this type of uh, video what I'm trying to do is go through what we're looking to achieve rather than looking at expanding brackets. Okay, So please do have a look at the other videos on the channel. So I've got x squared plus 9x squared is 10x squared minus 30x and then I've got plus 25 minus 65 so when I'm going to be factorizing this I need to make it equal to zero so I bring my 65 over and that's going to give me minus 40 and that equals zero. Okay well hopefully you can see that because I've got coefficients of multiples of 10 then I can divide the whole formula through by 10, or the whole equation through by 10. So this would become x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. And then really it's just a simple case of factorising that. And you should be able to factorise that to x plus 1 times x minus 4 equals 0. So now we've got two values of x. We've got the first value, which is where x minus 4 equals 0, so therefore x equals plus 4. And we've got the second value where x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals minus 1. OK, so we've got our two values of x, which are going to be this value along here is going to be minus 1. 
and this value along here is an x value of plus 4. Okay, so let's now take the x values and plug them straight back into this equation at the top here to calculate our y values. So what we've got then is the ability to take x equals minus 1 and we're going to plug it into y equals 3x minus 5. So therefore y equals 3 times minus 1 minus 5, which is going to give us a, x, a y value of minus 8. So what we're saying is, is that when x equals minus 1, y must equal minus 8. And that would be the answer for that part of the equation. OK, so let's have a look at when x equals um, 4. So when x equals 4, I'm going to do exactly the same, y equals 3x minus 5. And rather than writing x, I'm going to write the plus 4 value, minus 5. OK, so therefore y must equal 3 times 4 is 12, 12 minus 5 is 7. So when x equals 4, y equals 7. OK, I hope that's OK for you. So let's have a look now at what's actually happening on the circle and the straight line. So what we're basically saying now is we have two coordinates where this line, um, we're given it in the question as y plus 5 equals 3x, but what we really mean is y equals 3x minus 5, OK? And it's where it crosses the circumference of the circle. So we've got now two coordinates, one of which is going to be 4, 7, and that's going to be that point there. And then the other one is going to be minus 1, minus 8. It's actually very, very, very close to the edge of the circle, which is just slightly over 8. OK, I hope that's OK for you. I hope it's been useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Um, also, have a look at the rest of the channel, and there are further examples of these sorts of questions, which are aimed really at round about GCSE grade 7 uh, and above. I hope it's OK, and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.